Uh, my name is Greg. I'll uh, be the master of ceremonies today. Uh, I am the, uh, I got some background noise here. I apologize. <clears throat> I'm the uh, original sales manager for us there on Central and West, which is basically everything west of the Mississippi, uh, including Illinois and Wisconsin. Uh, with me today is Dave Gordon. He's my counterpart for the East. He is uh, in charge of all things East of the Mississippi. And of course, you know and love Larry. He is our uh, chief technical officer there, normally in the South Lake office, but he is uh, based in parts unknown today. Uh, working from home as we are all learning how to deal with the uh, corona world. So uh, just quick housekeeping issues. I uh, hope everybody can see us. Is there everybody able to see everything okay? I'm presuming yes. Um, get some, got a chat. Okay. Yeah, we're, we should be able to see everything right now. So with that, Larry, do you want to share your screen? I'm trying. Okay. And again, guys, I apologize for the technical difficulties. It is a uh, some un unforeseen challenges. I do see the screen up right now. So, um, Larry, it's it's your show. Oh, okay. There it is. All yeah. right. All right. Yeah, I've got Facebook running over here on one screen and. Uh, the display over on the other. We got some some uh, talk back on on one of the mics. We might need to. Yeah, well, that, turn that, that was because I had it had it up on on my screen. I, so I killed okay. my Facebook. Okay. All right. Very good. Ain't technology wonderful? When it works. <laughs> All right, as Greg said, I'm Larry Barnes. I'm the, the uh, chief cook and bottle washer and tech support manager in South Lake. And I'm gonna to talk today about our standalone controllers, which means any of our keypad and reader combos that can be run without a networked access controller. So all the programming is gone through the keypad, uh, one door at a time. They're great for small businesses where you have only one door, or maybe two doors that you need to control don't care about the uh, a, uh, logging or anything like that. So the true standalones, when we say a standalone, that we have two different types. The, uh, the simplest ones are, you literally have a keypad, a power supply and a lock and that's it. There's no other hardware required. And the most common models of those I have listed here should should have that screen up. But the, the AC F or G 43 is going to be pin only, 44 is pin and prox. And then the Q 41 and 42, those are uh, in an anti vandal metal housing. The others, the F and the G, are in a, a weatherproof plastic housing, but it's not anti vandal. The G being your narrow, narrow model for a mullion mount. F being a single gang box size. And I'll throw up some pictures here in a moment. The only thing these require is gonna be a power supply. And the power supply requirements are, it must be capable of operating the lock you've chosen. So if AC or DC, depending on your lock, uh, plus about an amp maximum for the keypad itself. Now that's got a lot of padding in it, but like the ACQ 41s and 42s, have a heater option. And when that heater kicks in, it can draw quite a bit of current. So that's why I read, stated it the way I did. They all contain two Form C relays, dry contacts that are capable of switching two amps at 24 volts AC or DC. So you're capable, you can run mag lock strikes. And yes, you can actually control two doors or two devices from one keypad, so. Uh, they all do have a request to exit input for each relay, meaning you can have a simple push button to unlock the door and use the internal timer in the keypad to hold it unlocked to meet code in those places that require it. And as I mentioned before, the models with an H in the suffix, that means it's got a heater in it to extend the operating temperature range. And here's some, some examples of 
the the first one being the F series, the single gang box size. G in the middle there is the the mullion, and then the Q and the 41 and 42 will look essentially identical, except the the 41 would not have this black bezel around it. That's actually the antenna for the uh, prox card reader in that in that model. So, seeing any questions from the viewing audience there, Greg? Oops. Greg, you're muted. <laughs> I sure am. I sure am. Uh, yeah, please don't hesitate to put your comments in, uh, in there. Dave and I are going to watch for comments and uh, kind of help Larry if anything comes up. So, All right. Uh, so here's a, a very simple wiring diagram. Uh, the one that comes in the manual is somewhat confusing because they try to throw everything into one drawing. So here's a simple wiring diagram, one mag lock, keypad, and your power supply. And that's it. Like I said, 12 to 24 volts DC, depending on what your mag lock requires. And that's it. Uh, the request to exit button is optional. Now you can also use an external Rex, meaning one that's wired directly in series with the mag lock, like a crash bar or something on your door. I didn't draw all those various options in, but the, the wiring and everything is, is quite simple. So, mag lock comes off normally closed. You'll notice a striking resemblance here with a strike. You just use the normally open output, which on the, some of the units have a pigtail. So I've included the color code on those. Uh, others like the Q41 and 42 have a, a terminal block in the back and it would be labeled normally open, common, etc. So, And then again on the strikes, if you want to use an AC power supply so your strike buzzes, no problem. My keypad will operate off of either one. So. And then uh, I threw this one in just to clarify and uh, yes, you can use it as a essentially a push button to secure a gate opener or garage door opener. So rather than if you need to have some kind of security on your gate, you can throw one of these up with a power supply and just trigger the uh, gate opener directly from the, the lock relay on it because the lock relay is a dry contact, so. Okay, anything you guys wanna throw in or uh, something I missed going over those? No, you hit it right on the head, Lair. All righty. Yeah, good stuff. All right. The The next product I'm going to talk about, we have a, a line of what we call our convertibles. They are They can either be used as a reader when connected to an access control panel, like our AC225, or they can be used as a standalone controller when they are connected to the PSC25T secure intelligent power supply. And, and the reason we call it that, the PS25T is where your lock relays are located. So it is a, in a small cabinet, I'll show a picture of in a moment, that would mount inside the building where it's protected. And, and it's not weatherproof, by the way, it must be protected. But it's mounted inside. So if someone were to pry the keypad off the wall and get to the wiring, there's nothing they can do from there to actually unlock the door. There, it's actually, when we say intelligent, there's actually a protocol that runs back and forth and commands are sent from the keypad to the intelligent power supply to uh, operate or release the relays. So they can pry it off the wall, they can play with the wires all day, they're not going to unlock the door by doing that. So that's why we refer to it as secure. The PS25T, like a, like the other controllers, contains two Form C relays, also rated for two amps at 24 volts AC or DC. So you can control two mag locks or strikes. Uh, they both have Rex inputs, just like the, the standalones. So again, with a simple push button, you can trigger the door to release for uh, the timer setting in the keypad itself. So no, no requirement for a timed request to exit button. Um, 
power for the PSC25T is an external 16 and a half volt transformer rated 20 to 40 VA. So for a single lock and keypad, a 20 VA transformer would be more than enough. And it does have a power supply circuit in it that will supply your 13 volts DC for use with mag lock strikes, etc as well as powering it, of course. It also has a charging circuit for an optional 12 volt, seven amp hour sealed lead acid battery to uh, give you battery backup if that's allowed by code. I know that's a, a no-no, especially with mag locks in some places. So here are some of the keypads in this series. The AYCF 54 is the pin only, 64 has a built-in prox card reader. The 50, uh, the the G is the mullion like before, the F is the single gang box. In the, in the uh, Q series though, there's, you'll see two models there. One's the 60, one's the 64. The difference there is the 64, like our, the other two there, reads only Rossler or only EM cards. The Q60 will also read HID cards. And actually I've got a mistake on here. The 60 series is available in the other two uh, form factors here. I just realized I didn't add it across the board, sorry. So we do have either or. We can do the AYC G60 in the, the micro million or the million mount. Those will read HID or Rossler EM cards. We also have some newer readers that do uh, read the 13 and a half megahertz MyFair cards. They will also read NFC off your phone. If you have an Android phone and it has NFC capability, this is gonna be the AYC H6355 and Q6355. The H6355 is a uh, molded plastic housing. It is outdoor rated. And I in fact had one on the out, outside of our building for quite some time. Uh, in full sun, rain, etc. had no problems with it. The Q is the same thing, of course, anti-vandal. Now, these will only read MyFair cards or NFC tags, so. But it does give you another option in a standalone. The PSC25T uh, unit, the, the full enclosure is there on the left. If you open that up, you'll see the small, this circuit board is mounted up here in the top right. There's room in the bottom of it then for your seven amp hour, 12 volt DC battery. That is not a weatherproof enclosure, by the way, as I mentioned before, just FYI. You can purchase the board by itself. And we have some, some folks with gate operators where they had an enclosure of their own. They're supplying power to the board off the gate operator itself, either via transformer or off a DC supply and then uh, wiring this directly into the, the gate operator. So uh, another option to use it. Wiring here is a little more complicated just because you have the two units, but it's, it's fairly straightforward. Off the keypad, you're gonna need four wires running back to the PS25T board. Red, black, green, and white off the keypad. You need to connect into the, the circuit board there in the PSC25. Uh, 16 and a half volt transformer for it for power, like I said, 20 to 40 VA. You can, uh, the backup battery is optional and it is obviously customer supplied. And then you can have a request to exit button if you want it, that wires directly into the PS25T, not into the keypad. And then uh, dry contacts again. So this slide kind of not in the same order, Again, you can use it with a gate operator, garage door opener, something like that by just connecting common and normally open. Then if you're running a mag lock, you're gonna to need to jump or power off the power supply terminal. There's actually several plus 12 volt terminals on the board, but uh, so you would jumper that to your common, come off normally closed to one side of your mag lock and the mag lock back up to the negative side of the of the power DC power. Again, request to exit button. All right, all pretty straightforward and simple. Strike is gonna work the same way, except you're gonna come off the normally open. 
Now here, if you wanted to run your strike off of AC power, you would not jumper this in. You could actually jumper the 12, the 16 and a half volts DC in and run it through there for AC power to the strike. So you get the, the buzz when you uh, release the strike. Any questions or anything I missed there? And, and, so and good. And Larry, we're just emphasizing at this time that this this particular wiring diagram is only for the convertibles, not the standalones. Correct? Right. This is only for the convertible, the standalone, just a power supply keypad and, and lock. This is the convertible. This is using the PS25C, PS-C25T uh, power supply inside and the keypad mounted outdoors. So, all right. And Jason asked if uh, these will be available uh, afterwards. And yeah, Jason, I'll, I'll give you my email address, and, and so you can reach out to me or Dave or whoever your your contact is, and we'll we'll try to get you the slides. All right. So I'm going to go through some basic programming on them. As I said, everything is done from the keypad, and this stuff is these are. I, I was lazy, by the way. This is cut and paste right out of some of the manuals. So if it looks a little bit of a mismatch, it is. So on the front of the of the, the unit, you'll you've got two LEDs. The left hand LED is referred to it as the mode LED. In normal mode, meaning it's ready to accept input on the keypad and everything is good to go, it will be green. If you see it red, one of two things has happened. One, someone's entered the secure code, meaning it, you've locked the keypad. And that's a way where you can have the last person out or the manager leaves at night, he can lock the keypad to keep employees from going in until he arrives in the morning, okay? It's a unique code. Or when you first power up one of these, and, and this is kind of one of those tech tip kind of things, when you first power the, the units up, if you have already applied power back at the PSC 25T and then you hook it up, hook the reader up outside to it, until you power cycle the whole system, if you will, by disconnecting the AC into the PSC 25T, that reader convertible keypad will come up in the, the secure mode, in the come up with a red LED. So it's got to initialize properly. So if you've just installed one, you can't get into programming, it lights red, just go power cycle it. Disconnect the AC in for 10 or 15 seconds. Bypass mode is a mode where essentially you're unlocking the door and you, you have a, a code. Uh, there is no default bypass code. You actually have to go into programming and create one first before it can even get in that mode. And in this mode, you can use the star button as a door release, or there's even an option where it can just be totally unlocked. So, so during the day, you can key in your bypass code, the front door is open, you leave at night, you key it in again, it toggles back closed. All right, and I'll show you the instructions here at the very end for doing that. All right. And here's just a quick listing of the default codes and, and what the, the various menu numbers are. Uh, there will not be a test at the end, except for Dave and Greg. So out of the box, they're always set up for a four digit pin. And there's what we call the lock test code and the auxiliary test code. The lock relay is the primary relay. Auxiliary is the secondary relay. Either of those can be used to drive a lock. 2580 is the test code out of the box for the main lock relay. If you do set it for a longer uh, pin code, then it basically just starts repeating. So it'll go to 25802 is your for a five digit pin, 258025, et cetera, up to an eight digit. Same for the other code. So the default programming code is 1234. I do suggest you change that once you install it. You know, it is pretty easy for uh, people to guess that one and, and get into them and start playing with them. But if you do change it, write it down, remember it, because it's purposely very, you know, made difficult to 
to change that code on the fly, so or to reset it, I should say. Normal secure code, 38, 38 pound. You, it doesn't say it here, but you have to hit the pound key after that code for it to take effect. Uh, some of these others, uh, they were in the table. I went ahead and left them in here, but these are just some of the defaults. Door open uh, activation time is four seconds is what that means. And uh, there is no lockout set, but you can set it up. So there, after so many failed attempts, it'll go into a timer for up to 99 seconds to keep somebody from just sitting there trying codes over and over and over again. By, as I said, by default, that's disabled. So, and then you can set the backlight to always stay on or only come on after somebody's hit a key and to stay on for X number of seconds. So menu zero, when you get into programming, it's always pound, pound, and then your program code, one, two, three, four by default. If you wanna change the pin code length, you, can, you wanna start there first before you do any other programming, obviously. So zero, zero is our default. That means it's a, a four digit pin code. If you wanna get back to that, that's how you get back to it. This also always clears out all codes in the system. So if, you, if you've got a, key, a keypad, people have been programming on it, adding, deleting, maybe not deleting when they should for years. That's how you default it, clear everything out of it and start all over again. Uh, if you hit 05, that sets it to a five digit pin code, 066 six, up to eight, we'll go to an eight digit pin code, so. The lock test code, oops, lock test code that I mentioned, menu one changes that code. So for instance, if you'd hit pound, pound, one, two, three, four, one, and then enter 9360, that becomes your new lock test code. Now, if you're only gonna have the one code that everybody's gonna use, you can just use that one. There's another method for entering codes that's designed for use when you have multiple users where everybody has their own code. I'll get into that in the next slide. But if all you're gonna do is a single code, uh, the menu is just program code one and then enter the new code. Real quick, easy to do, and uh, you can change it as often as you want, not a problem. Same for the auxiliary output for the other relay, it's menu two, enter your code there. So pretty straightforward. Any, any comments guys, any questions? No questions yet. Okay. Menu three changes that programming code. And that's, like I said, you really do want to do that after you get one set up. So pound, pound, one, two, three, four, three, three, seven, four, eight, or whatever you want to use. Just like I said, write it down, remember it, save it someplace because it is purposely hard to change. Menu four is that normal secure code. By default, it's the 3838. Again, one, two, three, four, then four, your new normal secure code. If you wanna disable that so you can't accidentally put it in, you enter all zeros. And that's one thing that's kind of missing from the slide. Same way on these two, menu one and two for these lock test codes. If you put a zero, all zeros in there, that disables that and you have to use uh, whatever's programmed in in the uh, the larger menu, the multi-user menu here in a minute. So Larry, Diane's got a question, says, so the ability to have uh, from four to eight codes, does it apply to both the standalone readers as well as the convertibles? Yes, it does. All the programming steps I'm showing here, I should have mentioned that, apply to both. The, the programming is, as far as I can remember, identical between the two, at least on anything I'm gonna go over today. So everything there is, is the same. Uh, went over programming code, normal secure code. The bypass code is menu five. Like I said, this can be used a couple of different ways. Uh, you can kind of ignore this whole thing about the door chime. I don't believe we even sell that anymore, but the, uh, the bypass code can be used to put it into a, essentially an unlocked state. and you just enter your code pound and it will remain unlocked or you can have it in the mode where you hit the hit only the star key to, to get in. 
Now, if you are going to add multiple users or if you're going to add proximity cards, and this is not clear in any of the manuals, I get this call a lot. The you go into menu seven and basically you go into programming mode, select menu seven. Then this first number here is a slot number and you have up to 500 slots in both of them. And if you hit 001, then the next number you hit is going to be the code you want to put in that slot. Or you can swipe a card. And once you, uh, if you're, if that's all you're going to input is the one number, you hit pound pound to exit programming. This one here confused me just looking at it, but what they're trying, you can enter multiple codes in uh, multiple slots there. I've never tried doing it that way myself. What you, the more common method is this one down here where you'll just start, you'll go into programming, enter your starting slot number, enter your first code or card, swipe a card, enter a code, either one, and you can mix and match these by the way, hit pound and then enter your next code or card. And you can just keep stepping through like that. So if you want to put 10 cards in, swipe a card, you know, go into programming, swipe your first card, pound, next card, pound, so on until you're done. If you're using this method, you want to make sure that you keep track of who is assigned what card and what slot you put it in offline. Keep it on, you know, in a spreadsheet, the big chief tablets, keep it somewhere because particularly with cards, there's no way to go in and delete the card without knowing what slot it's in. If someone loses a card, you don't know what number the card was uh, and you don't know what slot it's in, your only option to secure the building again is go reset the keypad and start all over, reload all the cards in it. So it's very important here to, you've got to manage this offline, particularly when you're using cards, because there's no, you can't use the search function to delete them, which I'll talk about next. Uh, this last step here, again, not used very often, there is an option to set a, an individual up with a, both a primary and a secondary code. That is to make them a master user so that that overrides the uh, secure lockout. So if you use the 3838 to lock people out, you can create what's called a master user by giving them both a primary and a secondary code so they can override that. So to delete codes uh, works somewhat in the reverse of, of adding them. Go into programming, select menu eight, select the slot and then repeat the program code. That's it. You've just cleared that slot out. Uh, that's the only way really to do it with a, a card, obviously. Now, there is a method if you know the pin that you're trying to delete, but you don't know what slot it's in, you can use the search method shown here. Go into programming, menu eight, enter slot number 000, and then enter the pin code you want to delete, and then one, two, three, four. And I'll, I'll stop here and add, if things work, you get three beeps at the end. If they don't work, you get one long beep. So for instance, in this one here, if you're trying to delete a code that does not exist in the, in the keypad in the system, you'll get a long beep after you hit the one, two, three, four. It means that code wasn't in there, it couldn't find it. Now, there are a lot of other programming options available in these keypads. You can set the, the door unlock time. You can do all kinds of things with the auxiliary relay. I'm not gonna go through all of those. Those are the kind of things, if you're trying to do something unusual, give us a call and we'll sit down and figure it out with you because there's just too many options here to go through and it makes it very confusing, so. Uh, the last couple of steps here, just to give you an idea, to replace the uh, an unknown programming code. So if you come up, get called out to service one of these, you have no idea what they changed the program code to. There is a method to reset it. On the units with a, a uh, 
pigtail on the standalone units like the F4344 with a pigtail, you can short the green wire to the, or you can on the uh, units that have terminal blocks, you're gonna short the re request to exit input. Uh, this is likewise for the uh, convertible units, you do this piece of it at the PSC 25T, you short the request to exit terminal in there to ground. So the process is you remove power, get on the, on the convertibles, disconnect the AC going into the PSC 25T. You short the request to exit input to ground. Now, if you do have a push button, Rex button, one that doesn't have a built-in timer, one that you can press and hold connected, you can use that instead of having to short the wires. Apply power to the unit, be it the PS25T or the keypad, with the Rex button or the Rex terminal still shorted to ground. After you apply power, wait a few seconds, like five, remove the short. You now have 15 seconds to key in pound, pound, one, two, three, four, then three and a new program code. Particularly with the uh, the convertible units where the PSC 25T is inside and the keypad's outside, you may wanna have two guys, uh, two people to do that because it, it does get a little, uh, you do have a time constraint here of 15 seconds. Be aware that the default code will depend on the pin code length. So we have not reset anything here. So if they were using a four digit, a five or six digit code before, then you're gonna be one, two, three, four, one, two, for instance, for a six digit code. And again, gets kind of confusing. Feel free to give us a call and we'll walk through it with you. And sometimes, yes, it, we have to go through it several times to get the timing right and, and figure out what's going on. Uh, one function that is not covered anywhere in the manual is by using that, that uh, bypass mode, we can set up a code so you can toggle the door unlocked. So you, you enter your code, the, the bypass mode by default uh, is where you have to hit the star key to unlock the door. But if you put it in the fail safe mode, meaning the door is unlocked to begin with, then when you enter the bypass code, it will actually unlock the door and it'll stay totally unlocked until you re-enter it. To do that though, you do have to move your lock from whichever terminal it's owned to the other. So if you're on a mag lock, you're gonna move it from normally closed to normally open on the relay, on the relay for a strike the other way around, normally open and normally closed. Then you're going to do the following two programming steps. I'm just assuming the default four digits and one, two, three, four here. So first you just enter the command pound, pound, one, two, three, four, six, and one, zero, zero, four. That puts it into the fail safe mode with a four second unlock time. Second command is the pound, pound, one, two, three, four, five, and a new four digit code. Menu five is where you input that, the uh, bypass code. So now when you enter the bypass code, the door will unlock and remain unlocked until you enter it again. It is not affected by anybody uh, mistakenly entering their uh, normal code, unlock code, while it's toggled open. That won't reset it or anything like that. Once you toggle it back to locked, your normal codes will work. So off hours, they you'd still be able to get in with your normal unlock code. All right. Uh, and that's what this statement here is getting at. 2580 still works to unlock it or any other programmed user codes. And when I say codes, that does include cards also. So if you have uh, if you've also got uh, RFID cards programmed in, they work in place of codes. I've never tried using a card for one of these specialty codes like this. I don't know if it'll work. So I'll answer that question the best I can at this point. If you wanna disable the toggle function, just go in pound, pound, one, two, three, four, six, put it back to the default of 0004 and move your lock wiring back to the way it was. And like I say down here at the bottom, three beeps is good. One long beep is bad. That means something went wrong or something's not configured the way we think it is. So. 
that's my epistle on uh, the standalones for the day. Any questions pop up? Uh, no, Diane made a comment about about uh, um, uh, documenting, and, and yeah, if, if if we could emphasize one thing is is document anytime, yeah, particularly with this because there's really not a way to retrieve that information. So if a card got out in the wild, um, due to or pin code, so, or I mean, pin code, somebody yeah, gets a pin code, yeah. Uh -huh. And, uh, and there's no way to tell who's using what code when, uh, like there is on a managed system. So yes, right. documenting it and keeping track of who's got what codes is is very very important. So gotcha. All right. Well, there you go. great stuff. Uh, we'll spend a couple minute, more minutes uh, talking about uh, sales related items. I know Dave, you've actually got one of the convertible readers there with you. Uh, do you want to kind of uh, point out some features that 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 you see? Uh, are, are interesting from from a installer and sales standpoint. Well, I think it's important for people to realize the standalone readers are excellent for um, a low budget solution on controlling a door. That's the upside of them. They're easy to install. Uh, we have excellent manuals on uh, Extracts NG website on how to wire them, including how to program them as well. There's a video on there on how to program the readers themselves. Uh, so there are really a nice solution for like a, a, a utility closet. Uh, your customer may not want to uh, spend the, the full blown money uh, for a panel based access control, but when you can go with a standalone uh, reader like this, whether it's the, uh, uh, the, the, AC, the, um, the ACQ 42 HB is what I have in my hand here. Uh, it's a heavy duty product. It's a very good seller for Roslayer. Um, it's, it's heavy duty aluminum. It has the tamper on the back of it. It's a it's a great product. Like Larry had mentioned before, if it has the black ring on the around it, it's the antenna. If it doesn't have the black ring, it's proximity only. Once again, a great pin salute. Only. Or, or pin only, yeah, without the black <laughs> ring. Thank you. So you know, it's it's a it's a reader that meets your customers' needs if they want something sweet and simple to control access to the door. That's the upside of it. The downside of a standalone reader is you have no audit trail. And there's no way of obtaining an audit trail. I get asked a lot. People will say, right. is there any way I can download information from it? No, you cannot. Uh, so it's very important when you're programming this product that you understand and keep track of who's entering what and who has what codes. But, and you can't uh, remotely uh, add and delete codes either. You can't, no. You can't access it. No. No, everything must be done at the keypad. And if you've got multiple keypads, you've got to repeat it at each keypad. So. So Brian, Larry, uh, Brian asked a good question regarding a, uh, a gate control. Unfortunately, only part of his message came up. Do you see that there? Uh, suppose you have a gate and you want a, uh, a keypad on both sides of the gate. What is the simplest way to do that sort of thing with these items? It seems like it would be very straightforward with the standalone units. How about the convertibles? Good question, Brian. Uh, with the yeah, the, the standalones is very simple. I mean, you just wire two of them in and put the lock relays in parallel, so either one closes the circuit. No big deal. With the convertibles, unfortunately, you you cannot have two keypads connected to one PSC twenty five T board. That would be great if you could, but you can't. So you're going to have to literally put in two of the PSC twenty five T boards along with your two keypads. Now you can power them both off the same transformer and then parallel their outputs, but it would require two of each, so. And Brian, we have other solutions. Uh, if you're looking just to control a gate, we have we have a couple different solutions, either through our Bluetooth readers or our long range readers that would be able to be a good solution for uh, gate control that are very, very popular right now. Right, and the, and the AC215 is, is such an economical option. It, it really, really makes sense to, to step up what you're looking for and, and investigate that AC215. Yeah, especially if you're, gonna, if you're doing read in, read out on anything, on a door, gate, whatever, rather than having to run in and inside and outside and program both of them, go ahead and step up to a, a managed panel like the 215. They're not that expensive. You can set it up if you don't care about the the event log and the history, you don't have to have a PC there running. They'll sit there and run forever, especially with no schedules or anything. Mm -hmm. So you can set up a two, two or 215 and leave it. And you've got a, a nice clean install for an in and out. So. Absolutely. Yeah. 
and if you haven't if you haven't held one of those uh, anti vandal uh, uh, standalones, I encourage you to go to your local distrib distributor and get your hand on one because just just feel it. That's a solid piece of a metal. I mean, it is uh, it's uh, quite impressive to actually feel the the quality construction and, and what goes into making that um, is is. Uh, you truly got to get your hands on one to, to feel it. You know, I see, uh, Larry's heard me talk about this before. I, I see our convertibles is really a gateway drug. Uh, when you've got a customer that's on the fence, they're not sure if they want to do more than one door, they, they may be a small office space or something like that. Uh, I always encourage them to go with, start out with the convertible as opposed to a standalone because the reality is, is you're probably going to get called back in two weeks and say, hey, uh, this is great. I love it. I want to go ahead and add the rest of the doors. And if you install just a standalone controller, now you're going to have to swap that out. If you put in a convertible, you simply disconnect it from the from the power supply relay, and uh, it's got a weekend output, so it'll it'll wire directly into to the new controller. Mm -hmm. And so now you you don't have to replace that reader. You can just uh, tie it into your new controller and have have multiple con uh, readers on on that system. So it, it, it's an easy, easy way to go and it's still cost effective and, and quite frankly, a more secure side, but uh, more, more secure solution. Cause as I mentioned earlier, the relay is on the secure side of the door. Yeah. I'll, I'll touch on that with the, you know, with the, the, the true standalone keypads, if somebody cuts the lead and it's a mag lock, your door is unlocked. That's all they got to do. Cut it. Mm -hmm. You're done. And strike slightly more secure in that they've got to actually strip the wires back and short the right ones together and they've unlocked the door neither one takes a lot a lot but uh, mag locks are particularly simple cut it with a knife and you're in you know that that's all there is to it so out of the box the the convertible units are more are very are much more secure i'll get it out in a minute uh i haven't been drinking that's the problem so <laughs> And not too late to start, Larry. Uh, no, it's not. So uh, th that is a, a definite advantage of that option. So. Um, yeah, Brian, Brian asked about uh, the if we've ever had fun actually testing the vandal features of the heavier metal and see how much abuse it will take. It kind of reminded me of that, uh, um, I think it was Blend Tech that used to have these blender commercials and they would go, well, yeah. well, it, well it blends so like a golf club or a, you know, uh, any number of things that well, put in I there. guarantee short of a uh, something designed to shred metal at the junkyard you throw this in a blender your blender is going to be in worse shape than the the keypad is they they are tough mm -hmm. we have yes uh, out of frustration a few times we have slammed them on the floor driven over them and, and had a, a little bit of fun with them the keys might not look real pretty afterwards but even the keys are metal on those and uh, they're they're uh, they're pretty durable. So. Yeah, they're they're very durable. Thirty odd six will take them out though. So it will, uh, <laughs> but they, they're heavy heavy aluminum. Um, very solid, very robust case. Uh, I have these. I see these everywhere I go, and you'll also see them in different names as well. Uh, you'll yeah. see you'll see a Honeywell name on it. That's still our product. We build them for Honeywell, mm -hmm. uh, as well as the thirteen fifty six versions as well. We build those for Honeywell. Uh, we have several different products. If you're not familiar with Roslear, Roslear does OEM for several of the main uh, names in the industry. Um, and I'd be more than happy to send you a presentation on who all, on some of the people we do OEM for. Yeah. And, and um, you know, as far, as far as, you know, folks that use, and you, you talk about there's riches and niches and, and we have several customers that really specialize in this. This is their, this is their business. And, and, um, many times you'll find it's a locksmith that, that wants to get out of traditional keying and want to go into more of an electronic access control, but really doesn't know where to start. They're maybe not computer savvy, and but 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 realize that that a a physical key is not always practical anymore. And so this is a great transition for them to get into the standalone controllers or the the convertible controllers, because quite frankly, it's 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 pretty straightforward. The programming is, I mean, if you can use a phone, you can program this. It, it does not require uh, computer skills. Uh, I will underscore again what Larry said and what we've said several times, document, 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 put, you know, create a, some kind of a list of codes and, and users so everybody, so, so you know 
what went where because you will have to go back and 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 delete that card or delete that pin at some point um but it's it's um you know i think dave mentioned supply supply closets or supply sheds uh pull gates any number of uh any number of things that 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 you can see uses for and and uh i'll say it again convertible is one of my favorite it is a gateway drug it your your customer if you install a standalone controller in a facility that's got more than one door you're probably going to get a call back and they're going to want to say let's do more doors i mean that's the reality of of dealing with this business so uh investigate that that uh, convertible line as well or they're going to call back and they're going to want to put that door on a schedule they're going to yes. want to do something beyond what you can do with the standalones that is one thing i'll, I'll say that none of the standalones allow you to set a schedule up. So if you have access, you have 24 seven access. If you want to toggle the door open, it's manual. You open it and then you have to close it. You cannot set a schedule to have the door unlocked from this time to that time. Now, some enterprising low voltage techs will put in a, a separate timer unit to allow you to do that, but it's, it's totally separate from the keypad. And that again is where you step up to a 215 and the programming of it is, is really, even though those is not that complicated, although you do need to install some software on PC and you can set up schedules, you can do all those things. But um, basic access, the, the standalones work great. So. I just put in comments uh, a website that you'll want to uh, um, put in your, your favorites there, axtracksng.com. And that's actually a website that Larry uh manages it's uh it complements our rosslairsecurity.com website it has a lot of the information you'll see here today you'll have uh, data sheets so if you want to download uh a a particular data sheet and and be able to use marketing materials from there it's got all that it's got programming guides uh and and also it it's got larry's uh contact or technical support contact information email phone uh, phone number, all that stuff. So make it real easy to, to uh, access those guys. Uh, so uh, bookmark, bookmark extracts, Uh It'll be your friend. Um, and it's got all kinds of, like I said, resources available to you. Right. Dave, Larry, did y'all have anything else? I, I don't want to. Uh... Uh, thank you. Thank you for joining us. Uh, we're going to continue to do these while we uh, continue to fight this virus and hopefully everyone's safe and sound and your families and uh, should you have any questions uh, from the Mississippi West, you'd contact Greg from the Mississippi East, you'd contact me. And uh, we're here to help you in any way we can, system design, et cetera. Just let us know. And if it's By the way, if... questions, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead, Larry. I was just going to say, if you do have technical questions, go to extractsng.com. Uh, there's an email link down there at the bottom. There's a phone number, and that will go to uh, – go to South Lake for the time being, if you are calling tech support, it is going to go to voicemail all the time. And that is the way we're sharing it. Since we're working, two of us are working from home. One guy is in the office right now. I have them all going to voicemail. That way we all get the voicemails uh, via email. So it, when we, when things get back to normal, we will, we'll, we may take it off the voicemail. I kind of like it that way, actually. But uh, for the time being, everything is go going to voicemail for that reason. So leave us a voicemail. We are monitoring it eight to five, Monday through Friday, and we'll get back to you as quickly as we can. All right. Very good. And then uh, also, just so you know, you'll be able to watch this. So if you came in late, you'll you'll be able to uh, watch this shortly. It'll it'll post a, a replay. And then if uh, if you want a link to send uh just shoot dave or me an email and we'll, we'll get you a link that you can share with your coworkers or or uh other installers whoever whoever needs a copy it'll be available as well so uh we really appreciate your time dave and larry unless y'all got anything we'll go ahead and sign off uh, have, a, have, a, have a great day everybody everybody be safe out there be careful thanks so much